You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Hey, 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 what is going on, guys? Welcome to another incredible episode of Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart Radio. And I am your host, Dean. We have a very special guest for you guys, so you definitely want to stick around for that. And as a matter of fact, text your buddies, family members, or even share it on social media right now and let them know that we are about to dive deep into another interview. Oh my goodness, I am so glad to be back with you guys. Uh, I was on the road with Busy Bone and we just did a Fuel Fest 24 in Dallas with Tyrese and I uh, also had a pleasure of meeting Cody uh, Walker. Uh, a lot of the cast members from the Fast and Furious franchise were there as well. Huge car show out in Dallas. Uh, so yeah, that was very fun. But yo, before I bring my guest on, I do want to say, what are the beliefs, the values, and the commitments that are sincerely yours? They are the ones you put into practice. What are the true priorities in your life? They're the ones which are evidenced by your actions from day to day, from moment to moment. Those people who are the very best at what they do get that way through practice. The best salespeople, the best musicians, the best designers, writers, actors, coaches, doctors, ministers, teachers, and engineers are the ones who practice most diligently. It's easy to say what you're going to do or to speculate about what you would like to do. What really matters, though, are the actions that you take. When you put your thoughts, your words, your intentions, and your values into practice, you give meaning and substance to them, and it can bring about great things. So take what you most, what you believe in the most, and uh, what you most long or hope for, and what you most sincerely value, and put those things into practice. That's the way to truly make them real. Take from me, Coach Dini. That is my word, and word is bond. Access, a minority-run nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting survivors of domestic violence and sexual abuse. Our prevention division educates the public on healthy relationships, consent, and boundaries, while our recovery division provides support and resources after trauma. We offer workshops and coaching to individuals worldwide, helping them navigate complex issues and reclaim their power. We believe in the power of education and conversation. Our interdisciplinary approach challenges societal norms and empowers individuals to live authentically and purposefully. With the guidance of our accredited coaches, you can overcome obstacles, achieve your goals, and create the future you desire. Don't wait to take control of your life and your sexuality. Visit our website, SexSorg, to learn more about our services and how you can get involved. All right, all right. Again, welcome to the show. You're listening to VRL. That's Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart Radio. And I am your host, Dini. Our interviews are designed to go beyond the music, news, books, acting, uh, films, technology, education, entrepreneurship, entertainment, and sometimes even past that thing that we call the ego. Our interviews are designed to go behind the scenes and into the minds of these incredible human beings. You know, the ones who are out there giving it their all for me, for you, and for the world. Well, welcome to today's episode where we are thrilled to have Jesse Mandina a trailblazer in the music scene from San Jose, known for his electric style that defies traditional genre boundaries. Jesse's new single, In My Head, explores the depths of psychedelic experiences through alternative hip-hop. 
my kind of music. <laughs> Today we'll share insights into how personal struggles and a deep connection with nature have shaped his music and how transforming personal hardships into art has become his signature. So get ready to step into Jesse's world and learn how every beat, every lyric tell a story. And with that, let's welcome Jesse to our show. Hello, hello. Welcome, Jesse. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Excited uh, that we have you here tonight, man. What's going on? Oh, thank you, man. I'm just here, man. I'm just here. I'm just trying to see what's up. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, you are what's up, for real, for real. So you have this brand new single, In My Head. Uh, can you tell us about the inspiration behind this new single? Yeah, uh, initially I was, uh, there was a period where I was just going through some little issues with uh, substance abuse. And, um, you know, I kind of wrote it just kind of bugging out, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I'm not in that phase of life anymore, so um, I don't really want to put too much on it. But um, I just say, I'll say it like this. Like, I'll leave it up to the listeners, whatever they get from the song. But uh, I, I'll say it's basically it's a metaphor. Well, we'll say it's a metaphor for loving trees, weed. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can say that on the radio, but yeah, man, it's um, 2024. Yeah, of course. So it's, 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 you know, people listen to it. Just take it as that. It's just it's my love for trees, man. You know what I mean? Um, in poetic form. <laughs> Yeah, man. You know what? It's funny you say that um, because it's like sometimes you do have to watch what you say. But I believe, man, we are headed in times where, you know, it's 2024 now. A lot of states are definitely legalizing. Here in my own city, man, there's like a, a dispensary on every corner, like liquor stores. So um, it's a good thing where, where for us. Uh, I'm in Mississippi. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. We're okay, like the last state. Yeah, we're like the last state to ever do things. So surprisingly, we had this happen. <laughs> right. You know, I'm from California, man. It, it all started here. So, I mean, it, it's the same thing. It's everywhere. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Now, there is one thing uh, that I don't think most people know. Now, we can go back to music, but uh, the Second Amendment rights, you know, if you if you go get a medical card, they will take your rights to bear arms. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that's true here, I guess. I mean, I don't really know, but I mean, I don't know if it's like that in California. To be completely honest, but um, that kind of sucks, man. Because uh, yeah, that, that, that's not because people drink alcohol every day and they ain't taking their guns. Right, right. You know? <laughs> or their right to bear arms, you know. <laughs> well, man, I believe in gun rights, so you know. Anyhow. Right, uh, yeah. You, you mentioned that uh, this is probably from your past, and you didn't really want to dive into it. I thought I was going to be like Oprah and, you know, make you open up, but we don't do that. Uh, but you no, did... Real, man. I mean, I was just on drugs and just not getting much sleep and just, like, bugging out. You know what I mean? Like, ah, I, you know, I, was, yeah. I was doing some things, that, you know, that kind of led me into a weird place. Uh, I'm not, you know, crazy by any means, but, right. um, you know... I'm, well, what, what I, is weird for you, Jesse? What's weird for me? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, because, you know, you, 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 if I go too far, then people will be thinking I'm crazy or something. But like I said, we'll just, we'll, we'll just leave it as a metaphor. I love trees in general, and I yeah. love my trees. And I could just, you know, I, like I said, I have to leave it up to the listeners because, like, for me, you know, there's been plenty of times where there's a lot of songs that I like growing up or I've liked growing up, and I thought they meant something. And... I took it to, I thought it meant something, but the meaning of the song was completely different from what I thought, but it still meant something to me. And to this day, it's like, you know, I, I, I utilize it for that reason. So I, I kind of want to give the people the opportunity to do the same thing, like whatever they can get from it, you know, just run with it, you know, but overall, you know, light one up and listen to that song. <laughs> sure. I was just going to ask you about that. Like, how do you feel about people when they misinterpret your songs? And they kind of craft their own meaning because you know music can be like soundtracks to our lives at the time. It could be a line that exactly. just like okay, this is perfect for what I'm going through. The rest of the song is irrelevant, but this line here makes this song my favorite song. Well, you know what, man? Like honestly, like uh, I don't, I, I don't think, like I said, I don't think people can misconstrue what I'm saying because it's up to them. But there have been times where, like, I have some songs that are on the internet, and um, you know, there's these sites that 
re like they write my lyrics. They think they know what I'm saying, but they're not. I don't know who's writing them, but they totally <laughs> like mis they miswrite everything. And I'm like, that's not what I said, but it, it's on the internet. And I'm like, damn. I hope yeah. people don't think that I felt that, that I wrote. That's not what I wrote. So I mean, in that in that aspect, it's kind of it can be irritating. But like I said, for the listeners, you know, it's whatever, man. You know what I mean? Like, like sure. for instance, there was a, a song by Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. Oh, it wasn't Soundgarden. It was Audio Slave. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the song was, but he's it, it, talking about the, I'll wait for you there like a stone. And it, you know, that's my favorite song. It, yeah, the bass player thought that he was saying some whole other shit. You know what I mean? And he's talking about waiting for God. Like yeah. I'll, I'll wait room by room. You know, like like loyally. You know what I mean? Like, but the bass player the whole time thought it was about something else. And <laughs> you know. So it's like, you know, it's the same thing. That's the beauty behind it. It's like, you know, just take what you can take from it. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm not mad at whatever, you know. It, I, you know after this, it's for everybody. It's no longer mine, so. Mm, I like that. So, man, in, in your journey, Jesse, what would you say is worth fighting for in life? Love, family, and uh, just just this realness man you know truth you know i mean is it hard yeah. to push truth in in these days and times when you know so much council culture is going on um yeah i mean not really because i mean like i said like i, I don't i don't think so I mean, if you're really blatant about how you feel, you mean you might get canceled or something like that. But like, I'm I'm doing I'm speaking in in poetic form, bro. So like, it's gonna take a little bit for them to decipher what I'm saying. Like, so, gotcha. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't know I don't I don't really feel no limitations. You know what I mean? Yeah. So speaking of limitations, man, when you're composing. How do you decide which emotions or experiences to draw from? Is it like a conscious choice or more spontaneous? Literally, like, uh, everything I write about is just about something, man. I mean, I, I get a kick out of just writing stuff about whatever, you know what I mean? So, like, you know, there, there, there's there's a song on, on my album where it was, like, this dude at a job I was at tried to, like, get crazy with me and try to fight me. And, you know, uh, you know, I, 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 I came back at dude and, you know, it ended up being cool or whatever, but I'm like... It was just off-putting the first day I meet the guy. He's, he's got this crazy attitude, and he's all, like, you know, trying to basically like, be a bully. And when it really came down to it, he wasn't really about the business, and it was cool, but, you know, I wrote a song about it. And it's called Killer or the Clown. Um, and, you know, it's on my channel. You can hear it. Uh, but, you know, when you hear it, it just sounds like a cool song. You know, people don't know that it's really about something. So it's that kind of thing, you know, where I just kind of like get a kick out of doing the art part of it and just speaking about some, something that happened to me. So it could be that or, you know, it, you know like I have a song um, on my album called Undead Ghost and it's about Beetlejuice. But I was kicking it with my kid one day and I was trying to show my kid the movie Beetlejuice. And my kid's like, yeah, dad, let's watch the movie. Let's watch the movie. Five minutes into the movie, my kid's on the phone. Oh, and I was man. bummed out because, you know, I liked the movie when I was growing up. So I was like, dang, the kid don't like it. So I'm like, man, I got to make a song about this movie. <laughs> Maybe I can turn kids on to the movie again, you know? So, you know, there, there, there's another song, you know? Just little things like that, man. I mean, anything could be made into a song, you know? Um, but, but, but normally, like, you know, there'll be music. Or I'll have ideas previous, and then I'll line it with music later. But most of the time, I hear music, and then I'll, I'll come up with something, you know what I mean, right there? Whatever it is that's going on with me. Right, man, that's real cool how you could just take experiences and things that really happen in your life and in time and, 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 and write in real time. That's real cool, man. Um, you've also collaborated very heavily with your producer, Barry Bones, and a guitarist by the name of Runny Steel. Um, how do their styles, yeah, yeah, how do their styles um, complement yours? Oh, man, I mean, like the song that I have right here. Actually, my, my brother Barry's right here. What's up? Say what's up, Barry. Yo, what up? What up, Bay Bones, man? The genius, the maestro. You guys uh, make a good pair, man. Thank you, man. Respect, Chief. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, man, I mean, he's my brother. We, you know, we grew up together. So, I mean, like, uh, you know, he, he's a DJ producer. So I grew up on like break beats, traditional hip hop, and you know, I mean, all kinds of music, man. I mean, like, we're in the lab right now. I mean, there's just vinyl everywhere. Like, you know, it, it, I don't think anybody really knows me like he does. He, to me, he's like a version of me, but a producer and a DJ. So like, you know, because for me, like, I like to break beats. You know what I mean? I like the old records, and I don't, I don't really got nobody like that except my brother. So yeah, it's it's beautiful, man. You know what I mean? Like, I mean. It, he made the music, you know, like like when you if, if all these people hearing the music like it, it's because of him. Dope, dope. So man, what is your history with with music? How did you get started? I mean, honestly, I was probably like, man, since I was a little kid, my my family got me into music. But when I was around ten or eleven, I started writing raps and singing, and you know. This my uncle uh, when I was young was like he tripped out on the, the fact that I was writing these songs and he's like Mijo like I'm Latin bro but he's like Mijo like I'll type these out for you or, or, or I'll put them on paper for you so he would like write my songs out and print it out and you know what I mean like so real young man I was I was doing it and it's just kind of throughout the years um, I don't know it became an outlet for a uh, I mean, just anything, anger, man, distress, you know what I mean? It was either that or hit the streets, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, from a young age, it's been a part of me. And my mom and my aunt, you know, I was always playing music for me young. So, it's just heavily a part of me. I don't know, man. I mean, without it, I don't know what I'll do. Man. So, what were you listening to at 11? Shoot. Honestly, Metallica, uh... Uh, let me think. Uh, what was I? I was listening to Metallica. I was listening to like old school, like uh, BBD, uh, like um, a lot of stuff, man. I'm mean, I could go down the line. It's hard to think this on the spot right now, but like, I mean, a lot of alternative, of course, and um, I mean anything from Soundgarden to uh, I mean bands that you're probably not going to know who, who they are, like Refused. Or uh, the Doors, like Beatles, um, you know, on to like hip hop, you know what I mean? Like, just just a lot of stuff, man. You know what I mean? What was your mother listening to? Because I know her musical taste kind of influenced your uh, your music preference as well. So you know, my mom was like Sade, Tina Marie, Rick James, Nice, um, Isley Brothers. You know, um, what else is my mom's play, man? A lot of, a lot of salsa. My mom, cause my mom's, I'm, I'm half Puerto Rican. So my mom is listening to a lot of like salsa and, you know, but she always had like the, the, you know, the soul part of it going. Um, so from a young age, man, she was like, I, like I said, she, she was, uh, we should get up super early, clean, and she just play music, man. You know what I mean? And, and but 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 the, like the most the, the most that she would play that I could remember was Sade. Tina Marie was a big deal in the house. You know what I mean? So like stuff like that. You know? Yeah. So man, uh, you released in my head ahead of the full album, um, and we, we're going to play that song in just a second. But what's the strategy behind uh, releasing singles leading up to an album launch? Um. But what's the what now? What is the uh, strategy? Like, I know a I mean, lot of people strategy, are just... Oh, go ahead. Go, I'm sorry. I mean, my strategy right now is like, you know, I, I got this single here, and I got another single that I'm going to put out. It's called No Man, featuring my boy Q-Timer, and Barry Bones made the beat. Um, I'm a, like obviously we just released this one and then next month I'll release that one but that's that's me rapping on that um and then I'll, I'm gonna drop the album after that and you know premiere it so, I mean my process is like obviously go through, through the PR company and release the singles and then you know premiere the album so that's basically my strategy right now um yeah 
Right. Well, guys, we're about to jump into In My Head by Jesse Medina, and then we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Yo, it, yo, it, it's Medina, M-E-D-I-N-A, like Medina in, in the Middle East. Yeah, that's what I said, Medina. But I'm not Middle Eastern, <laughs> but... <laughs> I got you. No, God bless everybody, but, but yeah, you know, I'm Mexican and Puerto Rican. Nice. All right, guys, here it is, Jesse Mendina with the song in my head. Stay tuned. <laughs> Chasing after success and not achieving your goals. Success is possible. You just need the right help, the right guidance, and the right mentors. And that's what you will find on the podcast, Stop Chasing and Start Listening, hosted by real estate investor and business owner, Jason Chrisman. Jason has a lineup of incredible guests who cover the world of real estate investing, entrepreneurship, and business strategies. You'll learn from the best on how to elevate your game. Guests include Richard Taylor. He's a 22-year-old powerhouse who's raking in $60,000 a month. That's right. He'll share his secrets to success and teach you how to unlock your potential. Leslie joins the program. Once, she was a pharmacist. Now, she's a digital marketing millionaire. You'll learn how she transformed her career and built her empire from the ground up. And don't miss out on the incredible story of a firefighter turned self-made landlord. With 53 properties under his belt, he's living proof that dreams do come true with hard work and determination. Each episode of 
Stop Chasing and Start Listening is filled with valuable insights, practical tips, and inspiring stories that will help you reach your goals. Add Stop Chasing and Start Listening to your podcast playlist right now on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and your favorite podcast platform. Stop Chasing and Start Listening with host Jason Chrisman. Start listening right now and take that first step to living the life that you and your family deserve. All right, all right. That was in my head. Welcome back. Welcome back. Dope, dope song. Let's go ahead and bring Jesse back. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back with us. Cool yes, song, sir. bro. Love it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, man, uh, during your experiences, you felt the strong connection with trees. Um, how does nature continue to influence your music today? Man, you know, I don't know. I mean, because, like, honestly, you think about it, like, it's either the beach or the, or the or, or nature. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know. I just feel connected to, to nature. And the thing is, man, you know, without these trees, you can't breathe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, people don't really think too much about it. But if the trees die, you die. So, you know, um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to get too much into it. But, like, you know, there's a thing on the Internet called the secret life of plants. Yeah, I might, might want to check that out, and and okay. you'll have a, probably a different perspective when you listen to the song. Um, yeah, that, that that that'd be the best sum of it for me to say, like the secret life of trees. Just look it up. You know what I mean? Like, it'll give you. I mean, they're alive, man. They're really alive. You know, they, they, they it's real. Yo, I just saw something so about like smoking. the walking palm tree. Have you seen that? Yeah, I, I have seen that in the Middle East, right? Yeah, is there some truth to that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. No, I think there might be, but I don't. I can't really say. I can't really say. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's some pretty trippy experiments, man. I mean, you, you can see, but uh, yeah, man. You know what I mean? Like, I, I had to, I had to, I had to put some, put it in poetic form, bro. You know. Sure. <laughs> So, man, I got one important question for you. Like, what do you hope your listeners feel when they hear your music? Um, I don't know, some some sort of connection. Like, you know, like I said, I mean, but, you know, it's up to the listener. So whatever whatever they can get from it, it's completely up to the listener. I, I, I don't really expect them to think anything. Like I said, I mean, it, it has its own sound and its own vibe. You know, like I, I just gotta leave it up to the listener. I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to like disregard the question, but I, I really don't know what to say um, except whatever you can take from it, roll with it. Got it. That's good, bro. That's good. And where can our listeners connect with you on, online? Uh, I'm on all the platforms. Um, you go to my channel. Um, this way west, this way westward, three sixty five. Um. And I, I, well, I don't know how it is. I, I don't even know what the damn channel is. But you go go to my videos. You see the channel. Music's on there. It's on all the platforms, everywhere. So just wherever you, wherever you can get it, whatever, whatever you have. All right, all right, no doubt. Channel. I will have yeah. all those links in the description of the episode. So just in case listeners, you getting you didn't get them, no worries. I'll have it covered. Just click the links. They'll be in the description and in the show notes. Well, man, Jesse, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, thank you for sharing your profound insights and your music. It's been enlightening to learn about the passion and depth that you bring to your work, transforming personal experiences into art that speaks to many. And to our listeners, be sure to check out Jesse's new single, In My Head, and keep an eye out for his upcoming album. It's called Extrasensory Modes Are of Perception, which promises to be a rich exploration of sound and emotion. And thank you guys for joining us today. And Remember to keep experiencing and supporting the incredible journeys of artists like Jesse. Stay tuned for more inspiring episodes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a great night. Yep. Hey, what's up, long time? I forgot to mention that. Oh, by the way, this is Dini, you know, Vigilantes Radio Live. 
uh, VP of Operations for Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony, blah, blah, blah. Anyhow, Only One Theory dropped a new single. It is called La Hefecita. It's on Spotify. As a matter of fact, it's on all major platforms. You should check it out right now. Oh, and by the way, there's also a visual on YouTube. It's hot. Check it out today. Only One Theory. Com. Check that out too. Peace. Thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio Live. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab it from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, Spotify, CastBox, iHeart's Radio, iTunes, YouTube, the app Podcast Addict, or over at our website which again is onlyonemediagroup.com and that goes for every single show that we've ever aired if you like to request some music or send something for me to play email it to vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com that is v as in victor and here's my disclaimer we are genre free we do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone and actually scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right that's the bottom line this is my show so deal with it (laughs) just kidding on behalf of myself denny i appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us spread the word because sharing is caring we stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show be sure to connect with me on facebook twitter instagram tumblr snapchat tiktok and all social media sites as well as spreaker youtube we always follow back okay well just remember to put yourself into everything that you do and never stop investing in yourself peace love grilled cheese and talk with you later You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive. What's up, guys? It's Dini, and I want to welcome you on a journey of the heart and of the mind. These Fucking Feelings podcast is a beacon in the world of mental health advocacy, and it invites you to join a conversation that's changing lives. We are here to share, listen, and grow together. Led by the passionate Micah Bravery, alongside the insightful Rebecca and Crystal, This award-winning podcast dives deep into the human experience, from navigating relationships to coping with loss. No topic is off limits. It's about real stories and real emotions. These fucking feelings, it's more than just a show. It's a community, a place where vulnerable isn't just accepted, it's celebrated. You can find it across major platforms, including YouTube and Facebook Watch. This podcast is a touchstone for anyone seeking understanding and support. These fucking feelings podcast where every emotion is valid and every story matters. Tune in and transform the way you see mental health.